Hey everybody, welcome back to At Home Author. I'm Vicki Weber. I'm Brittany Plumeri. On the first day of Christmas, At Home Author gave to me 12 marketing tips. <laughs> That's exactly what we're talking about today. We are giving you our top 12 tips for marketing your book. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so tip number one, have yourself a merry little marketing plan. Every author, every business, needs a marketing plan. And the answer for why is really simple. It works. A marketing plan doesn't need to be something scary. It just needs to be something that works for you that lays out what marketing strategies you are going to do, when you're going to do them, and what your goal is with each target. So this can be something you put on a sticky note. It can be a Google Doc, an Excel sheet. It could be something prettier or fancier. It could even be something you frame on your wall. The format isn't important. What is important is that it works for you and your book. I like to think of marketing as a puzzle piece. The more pieces you have, the more complete a picture you have. There isn't one magical strategy that is going to get you noticed. It's going to take many strategies that all support one another. So that's why a plan in place is gonna be the best place to start. It'll keep you organized, it'll keep you moving forward, and it'll really get you what you need to get your book out there. Some of the strategies you're gonna to hear today are perfect to add to your marketing plan. So that is tip number one. Tip number two, joy to the social media posts. It's time to up your game. Seriously, think about all of the Instagram accounts that you follow, whether it be recipes or home decor or other children book authors. Are you somebody you yourself would like to follow? If not, start looking at your content. Maybe make your branding color stand out or the posts that you're talking about. Start to make your content be just like the ones that you're following. Cohesive, consistent, and nice to look at. Tip number three. It came upon an influencer. Okay, so let's talk influencers. When it comes to the different parts of your marketing plan, you need to make sure you're getting in front of the right audience. It's really easy to just implement strategies, but if they're not getting you in front of the right people, it's not gonna lead to more visibility and sales. So one of my top tips for getting in front of the right people is by using influencers. You can ask them to leave you editorial reviews or feature your book. There are all kinds of things you can ask them to do. You can even partner and do giveaways. But the key here is you need to find people who have an audience similar to yours. For example, if you're like Brittany and you write books for toddler moms, go find toddler mom influencers because the people who are going to follow those influencers are gonna be other toddler moms and other parents. Since that's her target audience, that will lead to exactly the results she wants. However, if you do the same thing and reach out to a book blogger or a book influencer, Typically, the people who follow those accounts are other authors. Since that's not your target audience, your reach is going to be more limited, and so will your success. That's not to say you should never reach out to book bloggers or book influencers. It just means you should limit how much energy you spend on getting in contact with them and reaching out to them. Instead, Focus on those groups of people that match your target audience. But beware, you want to look for accounts that have high engagement. Look at how many likes they get and how many comments they get. There are a lot of fake profiles out there who buy followers. So if somebody has a million followers and only gets 50 likes on every post, red flag, red, red flag, don't do it. You're honestly better off with an influencer who has smaller audience, but with higher engagement. Just keep that in mind going forward. Tip number four, deck the hall with author visits. Okay, author visits are a great way to get your book out into the world. And the best way to do this, especially during the holidays, is promote having free author visits. Facebook groups, Facebook ads, contacting your local school's library. Any way that you can go about trying to get more author visits during the holidays is a great way to get your books out there and in the hands of little children just in time for Christmas. Tip number five, email time is here. Happiness and cheer. Email marketing is a great tool to have in your toolbox. 
Now, I know it was a while ago, but some of you might remember when Facebook and Instagram went down. It happened to be on a Tuesday, and for some authors, that was their release day. Social media is great, and it's powerful, but email marketing is consistent because you can actually own your email list. It's a digital piece of property that can't be taken from you. There's no algorithms or anything like that to worry about, and it's more personal. If I make a post or a comment on social media, it's public for the most part. Other people can see that comment. Other people can see that post. But when I reply to an email, I'm only talking to one person or one company. So their replies to me are much more individualized. It's a great way to increase your network, to connect with people, and also to just build a loyal following that will support every book release and support the other things that you do within your author career. Some of the top ways I grow my own email list are with lead magnets and launch teams. Now you've heard me talk a lot about launch teams in my other videos here on YouTube, but lead magnets are just as important because they're like an employee that works for you 24 seven. You put something enticing and free on your website and then you drive traffic to it. They only get the freebie when they put in their email. It's important to keep in mind that not everything needs to be a big push. You don't need to gather 100 email subscribers a day or 1,000 in a month. Even if you're gathering one new subscriber a day or one a week, it adds up over time. So it's okay if you don't suddenly have a huge email list tomorrow. The important thing is that you put all of these strategies into place now so that they're working for you in the background and helping you get there one step at a time. Tip number six. We wish you amazing reviews. We wish you amazing reviews. We wish you amazing reviews so your books will sell. All right, let's jump right into it. Reviews are life. I don't know about you, but when I am trying to purchase a new product on Amazon, I go through every single review. From five stars to one star, I want to see what everyone has to say about it. So with that being said, there are two types of reviews. The first one is an editorial review. These are from experts in the industry that give your book credibility. So I'm talking about readers' favorite, book life or even an expert themselves in the topic that you're trying to teach. These are the type of reviews that you are going to get and plaster everywhere. Your social media, your A plus content, let people know that your book has some credibility behind it. Review number two, our actual customer reviews. So these are people that have bought your book, maybe even friends and family, a few author friends out there, but these are the reviews that will show right up on Amazon and you can get more of these by doing free book days. But do not fret, there has been so many times that someone has done a free book and the next day you get that one star. It doesn't matter. One star isn't going to make or break the fact that you are killing it in this author game. Tip number seven, Facebook ads. Facebook ads, it's Christmas time in the city. <laughs> Facebook ads are a great way to help support your author business. And there's a couple of different ways that it can do that. but. We're gonna break it down to a couple of bullet points here. So the first thing with Facebook ads is you have to determine your goal. Are you trying to make more sales? Are you trying to get more email subscribers for your email marketing list that we talked about earlier? Are you promoting an event? Are you trying to just gain visibility or more page followers? You need to determine what the goal is with that particular Facebook ad first, because that will influence the other things you do while you're building the ad. Then you have to create catchy content. Think about what types of things stop you from scrolling. Is it videos? Is it graphics? Is it certain colors? Is it design? Is it stock images? Start taking note of those things and start thinking about what your target audience would really find attractive. Sometimes you might not know right away. You might need to test a couple different images or a couple different videos. Play around with it, but at its core, you have to have catchy content so that people will see your ad and interact with it. Then you have to narrow your audience. A lot of times I see authors be very non-specific. They'll say, oh, my audience is parents or, oh, my audience is teachers. But the thing is not every parent and not every teacher is actually going to purchase your book or be interested in it. There are plenty of high school teachers out there and college professors. There are parents who are empty nesters. Are they going to want your picture book? Maybe. 
Maybe not. So what you need to do is really think about not only the age groups and the dynamics of your audience, but also their interests. Not everybody's going to have the same interest level in your subject area. So narrow your audience with Facebook ads when you are running these to get the best results. And finally, use an analytics tool. The Facebook pixel is super important to install on your website because it will help you start tracking the results of your ads. So it will help you to see how many leads you're getting in and it'll help you get data on those people, which will help your ad be shown to more of the right people in the future. The Facebook pixel can be a little bit tricky to install at first, but once it's up, you're done. And if you need help with that, you know who to ask. All I want for Christmas is A plus content. Okay, A plus content. Okay, A plus content, according to Amazon, can raise your book sales between three and 10%. I personally love to refer to it as my walking billboard. It'll have the reviews, the awards, it'll have the illustrations that I'm obsessed with in my own book. Anything that you want to showcase about your book is going to be what you put in your A plus content. And that is going to be your more of a sneak peek and a reason for the why to purchase your book. Tip number nine, AMS, AMS, AMS rock. AMS stands for Amazon Marketing Services, or in other words, Amazon ads. This is an amazing strategy because the people who are on Amazon are already in the shopping mindset. So unlike other ads platforms where they might be in the mood to purchase something, if somebody's on Amazon, the chances that they're pulling out their wallet are really high. That means it's a great opportunity for you to get added to the cart as an impulse buy, or for people to actively want to learn more about you, your books, and what type of things you write about. Now, Amazon ads can be a little bit tricky of a platform to learn at first. It doesn't work the same way that social media ads do. They're a little bit slower and they don't spend the same amount of money. With Facebook ads, if you give Facebook $5 a day, it will spend $5 a day. Amazon ads, it's not really that simple. But here are the most common tips, tricks, and mistakes that I see with Amazon ads. The first is spending too much. If you put too much money into your Amazon ads at first, you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall. You might not be targeting the right people and you're gonna spend a lot of money trying to figure out the platform. The second is spending too little. If you don't spend enough per click, you're not going to get impressions. Your ads are not going to be shown to people. And so you're not gonna know what works and what doesn't if not enough people are viewing your actual ads. Another is incorrect metadata. This one I see all the time, where a book is in a category that it shouldn't be. For example, if you have a children's picture book and you are accidentally in a chapter book category, the computer is going to start to think you have a children's chapter book, which means the ads are going to start showing you alongside other chapter books. Since that's not the right audience, you're not gonna get the results that you want. So make sure that your metadata, your title, your categories, your keywords, all of those things really align with what your product is and what your target audience will want. Another one is trying to appeal to the wrong market. Your book needs to be so high quality that it could be mistaken for a traditionally published book. That means the illustrations, the writing, the editing, all of the work that you put into that Amazon sales page needs to be clean, professional, and well done. If that is already the case, then you need to make sure, like I said previously, that you're targeting the right people, that you are looking at the right categories, you're using the right keywords. I've had it happen where somebody has clicked on an ad because they thought a book was something that it wasn't, only to land on the Amazon page and realize, oh, I thought this was a chapter book, this isn't a chapter book, or oh, I thought this was about, insert topic here, this is about this other topic. Be very honest and very clear with what your book is about and who it's for. Tip number 10. Rocking around the vendor event. Vendor events are a great way, especially during the holidays, to get yourself out there and to get your books sold. I'm talking craft shows. I'm talking Christmas paloozas. I'm talking about any of those that locally will accept vendors. A couple of things to know is that you are paying for your table spot. So I've paid as little as $10 and I've paid as much as $150. But all of those events I have left with less books than I had brought in. Second thing to know 
is that people at these events are expecting a deal. So don't go in with the price of what you have on Amazon. That's not really a deal. I wouldn't go in selling my book that's $12.99 on Amazon for $12.99. You wanna make it a quick number. So $10 is usually great because they usually have a $10 bill right there ready to give you. So you wanna make it easy for them to be able to give you the cash and also at a discounted price. And the third thing to know is your event space needs to be decorated. Make it so it's inviting. Have cutouts, have posters, have even coloring pages for the children to come and just color for free. You want to show people that you're inviting them in to getting to know you and you want to get noticed. These are a great way to get your name out there and around your county. Tip number 11, have a holly jolly bookstore. This is one of my favorites because people always ask, how do I get my book into bookstores? If you're traditionally published, you won't have to worry about this too much. If you're self-published, one of the easiest things to do is ask. Most local bookstores and other small indie stores will just ask for a wholesale discount. For bigger stores, they usually will ask if you are in Ingram's database. So if you use Ingram Spark as one of your print on demand providers, then you can go ahead and say, yep, my book is in Ingram's database. Quick tip for you, if you run into a bookstore that seems to be a little hesitant about self-published authors, skip the self-published part and just say, I'm a local author and I would love for you to carry my book. Tip number 12. On the 12th day of Christmas, at home author gave to me more marketing tips <laughs> in the description below. <laughs> we have jam packed the description with blog posts, YouTube videos, courses, any and all other resources that we could find and gather to help you get your books successfully marketed. Thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe for more videos. Maybe not as Christmassy as this one, but hopefully just as helpful. Until next time, happy holidays.